Hi everyone. In this uh, video, what I'd like to show you is how to use um, two RF24 modules to allow your Raspberry Pi and your Arduino Uno to communicate wirelessly. Um, I've been looking around the internet for a simple and easy to use guide and I couldn't find it and uh, I was having uh, much trouble actually getting these to to communicate so eventually I figured it out and uh, I thought hey I'll make a video to help other people um, with this same problem so it seems like um, most of the problems that people have have to do uh, with the connections on the Raspberry Pi side so I might start with that um, I've got uh, the original Raspberry Pi. It's um, Raspberry Pi 1 Model B. It's one of these here uh, and it's got uh, the, the short uh, GPIO uh, header. So it's uh, this one here. It's uh, 13 pins uh, across. Uh, the newer ones, I've got a couple of new ones, but they're both occupied in other projects at the moment. So um, I'm going to use uh, the schematic on Wikipedia. So uh, this schematic here, this pinout schematic corresponds to uh, my version of the Raspberry Pi. If you got the Raspberry Pi B or B+, basically it's the same connections. So don't worry about that too much. It's just the uh, Raspberry Pi B uh, and Model A actually expand their GPIO headers with uh, an additional number of pins. Um, the library that I'm using to make uh, the connection possible is this one here from Stanley Seal. Uh, it's a fork as well. I believe it's a fork from uh, the original Maniac Bug um, uh, libraries. And if you actually go to the root of this repository, you see here there's um, a folder for the Raspberry Pi. So you go into that folder, you scroll down and you'll see it's got a set of connections. Now, a lot of people are having trouble getting these connections actually implemented. So uh, I'll show you how I've done it. So I'm gonna to switch to the Wikipedia uh, pinout diagram. And um, <clears throat> I used um, a ribbon cable like this to uh, connect the, uh, the module onto the Raspberry Pi with a few uh, jumper wires. So these are, uh, male to female jumper wires just like this one here so one side is the female side and the other one is uh, the male just the way that the raspberry pi header is configured so uh, the first thing you need to figure out is how to get how, actually how to figure out which pin on the module itself is connected to uh, the, the pins at the end of the ribbon cable <coughs> excuse me I think the easiest way to do this is to use your multimeter. So you set your multimeter to continuity testing. All right, so I've got my continuity testing symbol set up here. And then let's say that I'm trying to figure out which wire is this yellow wire, which, which pin this yellow wire connects onto the module. So I'll just uh, disconnect it for a second. All right, I'm gonna stick a jumper wire the end of it and I'm going to use the leads of the uh, multimeter and see if I can get a connection I believe that this is the um, uh, the IAQ right the IAQ pin so this one here yep and it is right so you do the same thing for all the pins to be absolutely sure as to which pin is connected to which of the wires on the ribbon cable so who, where did I take this out of? <laughs> so I think this came out of uh, GPIO. Um, one second, so plug that back in here. I believe that came out of GPIO um, uh, 21. So yep, so 25, 23, yeah, 21, 21. So this is pin, physical pin 21, and is GPIO 9. So you're going to bring up this little image as well. So it shows um, the, the pin layout of the RS24 module. So the connections that you want to do are uh, the 3.3 volt 
we'll go to pin number one. Uh, where is my screwdriver? Okay. So we got to pin number one. So this one here is 3.3 volts. And you've got your ground. So ground is on the module is the one with a little white box uh, uh, drawn around it. So that is uh, pin number six on the Raspberry Pi ground. So it's uh, the black one here. Then we move on to CSN. So CSN goes to GPIO 8, which is pin 24. So that would be um, that would be this one here. <clears throat> so that's pin 24 on the Raspberry Pi. And we move on to CE. Now a lot of people had trouble with uh, CE. So CE will go to pin 22, sorry, to GPIO 22, which is pin 15. So let's see, that is um, this one here, pin 15. Next one is MOSI. So MOSI will go to physical pin 19, which is this one here. So it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four pins from the end of the row. So this one here is MOSI. Then clock, which goes to, uh, let's see, physical pin 23. So physical pin 23, which is this one here, GPIO 11, so this one here. And then finally, we've got uh, MISO, which is, uh, uh, MISO goes to physical pin 21, which is GPIO 9, this one here. So it's uh, this one here. Oh, hang on, I think I made a mistake earlier. It's yellow. Yeah, so this yellow wire that I just tested earlier, I connected it to the wrong place. So this should be going into GPIO 9. Okay, that's MISO, that's physical pin 21. So um, double check and triple check that these connections are correct. As far as the uh, Arduino is concerned, these are the connections that you need to uh, implement just follow the same method with your multimeter to figure out which pin connects to which wire on the um, on the ribbon cable and then directly into the Arduino. Don't forget that this is a 3.3 volt device, so uh, don't connect it to 5 volts. Right, next thing to do is to download the library. So uh, you want to go to the root of RF24 and uh, download the zip file. You need to download the library both on your um, on your computer, so you can install it eventually in your Arduino IDE, and onto your Raspberry Pi. Um, in your Arduino IDE, once you install the library, which, uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that. I assume that uh, you know how to do that. Um, then you're going to find that the example sketches are available here. So the one I'm going to use is getting started, which I have already loaded, right? So here's getting started. Now let's connect to the Raspberry Pi. So this is my Raspberry Pi. It's a fresh installation of Raspbian. Um, I only installed the, the basics, um, including uh, the git clone package, so that I could use uh, git to download the repository. And uh, I've got, um, let's see, I think I've got um, this inside my projects directory. So here I've got uh, previous experiments, but now it's uh, RF24. And um, in here, uh, I'll go into RPI in order to find the Raspberry Pi code example. So let's go into RPI. And in here, there's uh, RF24. Let's clean up. Okay, 
So inside examples, there is the getting started example. Have a quick look inside getting started. We want the CPP file. So uh, one thing to notice is that constructor, All right? So here the example gives you a few different examples of the, the constructor and the constructor basically is uh, how you tell uh, the, uh, the Raspberry Pi where you have connected the CE and uh, CSN pins of the module, right? So you can do that in different places. So you can have, for example, CE in uh, physical pin 22, physical and uh, CSN, um, physical, physical pin 26. But I go with uh, the default option. So physical pin 15 for CE and physical pin 24 for, for CSN. And I'm also going for the full eight megahertz speed. So the speed that you choose here must be the same as the one that you will be operating. You will be operating the module on the Arduino side. And the other thing to notice is the pipe addresses that you use. So the pipe addresses that you use should be the same as the pipe addresses you use on the Arduino side. So if these two are different, then uh, you're not going to have communication happening between the two. Um, in case you are interested, if you go into, let's see, into the RF24 uh, code, go into the header file, you'll see what the valid choices are for, uh, for these values. So there's your one megabit per second speed, for example, two megabits per second. Um, these are your CRC options um, and, uh, and so on. So if you're curious about what valid options there are for these things, then you can look them up. Okay, so let's get out. Uh, the next thing to do is to up, uh, first compile the program on the, uh, on the Raspberry Pi. So to do that, I'm just going to say make, and then make is going to execute the, um, the, the, the program or the, the script inside make file and compile everything that's got a CPP extension on it. So just say make, and that is going to go and create my getting started executable file. While that's happening, I'm going to upload the sketch onto the Arduino. Is it plugged in? Oh. I need to plug it in. So that's going to be an Arduino Uno and that gets uploaded. All right. And on the other side, on the Raspberry Pi compilation has completed. So now I'm going to execute the uh, getting started program. All right, so let's see, I'm going to make, I'm going to make uh, and bring up the terminal for uh, on the Arduino side. So let's make um, the Arduino, let's make it the transmitter and we'll make the Raspberry Pi the receiver. So that's going to be the transmitter, T here and uh, pong back means uh, receiver. Yeah, so it works. So there you go, this setup is, is working. Got a, a failed packet. It's okay. When you have um, <coughs> failed packets. Uh, one thing that you can try perhaps is uh, to choose a different channel for the transmission or perhaps uh, reduce the, the payload. Although in this case, I don't think that the payload is too big. It's it looks like it's only a, a, a number. Uh, what kind of number is it? Like a, um, just going through the code. The payload is just a long Okay, just a long number, so uh, it's not that much. 
So maybe there's some interference with my Wi-Fi here. I've got a lot of things uh, transmitting at the same time. So I could try a different channel. Anyway, this is what I wanted to achieve. I wanted to uh, get these two to communicate with each other. Um, hope this is useful to you. Any questions, feel free to send me a message.